Imaginary stations want to hear from you because radio connects us all. Do you have a phone with a microphone? Send us an audio postcard from wherever you are in the world. Send us greetings from outside the train station in Paris. Or your favorite sound birds from Germany. Send your audio to imaginary stations at gmail.com and you may hear yourself in an upcoming broadcast. to birds is the decline in biodiversity due to habitat loss, and the traditional manicured lawn isn't helping. Even birds who visit backyard feeders, like these black-capped chickadees, need a healthy mix of seeds, berries, and insects, often found on the native plants that we villainize as weeds when they grow in our lawns, says the ecologist Douglas Calloway. We have more than 40 million acres of lawn in the U.S., which is the size of New England. And that's an ecological dead scare. That means one of the easiest ways to protect birds at home is to grow native plants, says Tallamy, who co-founded an organization called Homegrown National Park to help people transform their lawns into havens for wildlife. I'd love people to stop looking at their yard as an isolated ecosystem. It's part of a neighborhood, and somebody's got a sunny spot down the street, but no trees. Okay, that's where the pollinator garden is now. Oh, my God. That's great. That's going to provide a lot of resources. I'm going to have a lot of things in that yard. So look at your neighborhood as an entire local ecosystem and see what the total resources are. Reducing your lawn to make room for native plants is a small step forward. But imagine if everybody did this. This is why we call the Homegrown National Park movement a grassroots movement. It's a call to action. To learn more about Homegrown National Park, Start at our website, birdnote.org. I'm Ariana Rimmel. Hey, kiddos, you know what time it is? That's right, it's cuckoo time with Jugular Jones. Please stay tuned for the bird is the word is what I heard while eating my curds and whey. Thank you. 